at I'm not Christina Laster, I'm filling in. She's in the field, so I'm here with you today. And thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we're here with the National Parents Union, and we're gonna get this rolling right away. You have a treat today. We have a panel of guests, students from Black Student Unions, either high school or college. So let's go ahead and bring them over. Good morning, good morning, students. Good morning, are you there? I see one. Hey, Amaya, you're sideways. There you go. Good morning, Amaya. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I see Tiana. Tiana! Hello, Miss Tiana. Hi, how are you? I'm well. I see Lyric. Good morning, Lyric. Good morning. And let's see. I see Jonathan. Where are you, Jonathan? Handsome Jonathan. Hello, Jonathan and Chelsea. Good morning. How you guys Hi. doing? Oh, you sound so sleep. Good morning. You're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we're here today and we're going live on Facebook and we're talking to parents all over the globe. And we're just here today just to give some experiences that you all have had either um, through your BSU or your Black Student Union at your school. And then what was it like while you were there? So that as parents, we can take some of the experience that you have had um, in school and see how we can either tweak what we're doing as parents. And then also, we want to make sure that we're training up the next generation because you guys are the future. You all want to go ahead and um, start off by introducing yourself and give like a little snippet of who you are. And if you feel comfortable with talking about the school and the BSU you belong to, feel free. Take us away, Tiana. All right, my name is Tiana Cox, and I was the president of Chaparral High School's Black Student Union from the 2019 to 2020 year. So during my junior year, I was the president of our BSU, and um, we were able to do a lot as far as like we were trying, like before COVID-19 hit, we were trying to integrate our Asian Pacific Club and our Black Student Union in order to like come together and do more things to promote diversity and equity on campus. But then that all kind of got shut down. So. Um, as far as like me as a person, I like to draw and I like to make people laugh. <laughs> awesome. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Lyric. Okay. So hi, my name is Lyric. Um, I was a member of Chaparral High School's BSU from the 2019-2020 year. Um, I was a senior. As far as what I like to do, um, I do a lot of calligraphy. I read a lot of books. I don't know. That's awesome. You know, if you want to hide something from anybody, put it in the book, right? <laughs> down here, down low. Who is this down low? Jonathan. Oh, oh, hi. My name is Jonathan Mitchell. I'm a student at Chaparral High School, and I was in the Black Student Union Club from 2019 to 2020. And personally, as a person, I like to dance and make people laugh and have as much fun as possible. Oh, that's cool. In the middle, Maya. Oh, hi. Um, I'm a Maya. I'm Janae's daughter. I um, attend Cal State Fullerton. I've been a part of the BSU since I started my freshman year of college in 2018. And um, I'm majoring in political science and minoring in public policy. Awesome. And then last but surely not least, Ms. Chelsea. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chelsea. And I was the secretary for the BSU of 2020, 2019-2020 school year. And as far as what I do, I just basically support BSU most of the time and just support my fellow black students. Awesome, awesome. So it, it's just a pleasure. Thank you so much for, you know, taking some time out to um, sit in with us and just kind of give us a little background. So when we talk about BSU, because everyone's not familiar with what BSU is, and when we use acronyms, they're totally not familiar. We know it means Black Student Union, but what does that mean to you all, Black Student Union? What do you think that looks like at the high school level then Amaya you can tap in on what it looks like at the collegiate level so anybody anyone anyone Bueller Bueller yeah. <laughs> okay so I would say at the high school level is just like it's basically like a club because like any other club like a, like say it's like a sports team like the water polo club or the football club they're all like a big family it's basically the same thing but for our culture and I feel like a lot of people are like feel threatened by it because we're trying to be like figure out who we are and where we feel safe as like on a campus that's predominantly white. 
So I think that people need to understand that like Black Student Union is not like some like terrorist organization or whatever. It's just us trying to find people who look like us and us trying to find a family on campus. Awesome. Anybody else want to jump in? If I feel like it's a club where black students, they all come together and to be a family on mm -hmm. a campus that's like, you know, mostly white students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all. Um, so at my university, it's kind of like, it's like we have different, we call them resource centers, not necessarily like clubs per se, but it's kind of the same concept. It's just um, since my university only has 3% made up of the population that are African-American students. So majority of us all know each other. And so when we do go, to, um, it's called the ARC where all of like the students in the BSU kind of go to like talk or we have meetings and stuff like that. And we call it the African-American Resource Center instead of calling it like a club or anything. And um, we basically just, you know, we all exist there together. The only difference I feel like between college and high school is that mostly um, our clubs or clubs, resource centers, whatever you want to call them, we can't necessarily say like, if you're not black, you can't be in the, in the black student union. So it's mostly like, we have a couple people who come and they'll be of other races or ethnicities. So it's, it's mostly made up of black students, but we do sometimes have a couple of stragglers who are like Asian or they are white or, you know, of another race that come and join us sometimes as well. Okay, well, that's really interesting um, to know that the word club is really um, being used because historically the black student unions were the civil rights organizations at the level of whatever campus they were on. So for my, at the collegiate level, your BSU would be the civil rights organization in the collegiate sector. And in high school, BSUs would be the civil rights organizations for the students that are in high school and sometimes middle school. And now we're seeing a lot of trends where districts are starting BSUs at the elementary level. And it's important to note that um, you have to think 20, 30 years ago, how would students be able to learn about their rights? How would students be able to fight for what they believed in for people of color, especially, you know, we're concerning African Americans. And where do we go? When Maya, you say resource center, you know, 20, 30 years ago, African American students could not just go and get some of those resources, you know, available because of, of you know, systemic racism that have been in certain institutions. So we want to note that the civil rights organizations start off very small and it's really, really important that we continue to push um, to make sure that our students that are coming behind you all understand the role of the BSU so that it doesn't get lost in translation because, you know, club, anybody can join, right? Anybody mm -hmm. can join a club. But when you're talking about a council or you're talking about um, a union, it's where you're trying to get some information out there to for the betterment of those that you know we're we're actually fighting for, right? So when at school, um, a lot of you have uh, talked about how your school was predominantly um, of the European culture. So what were some of your experiences like um, being in that type of atmosphere, and how did BSU help you develop to who you are today? Can I go first? <laughs> Um, so at my university, um, we had a situation where, um, you know, it's predominantly, you know, white kids or Asian kids mostly. So a lot of times people are very, uh, they do a whole lot of cultural appropriation and then they're not very considerate of the black culture. And we had an instance where um, a frat decided to put um, a derogatory term on a flyer and it was a really bad situation at the time but um, it actually had a lot of good come out of it my BSU actually came together and put on like a kind of like a town hall and it was mostly the students there wasn't any adults involved and it really felt like it concerned us and it really felt like the university kind of sort of listened to us as people and um, you know a lot of people kind of say like oh well 
you're still in school, you're not an adult, but I feel like we handled it like adults because mm-hmm. it would have been easy to just go and like, you know, beat them up or something. But like we did it the professional way. We went to the president everyone wrote him letters we all called his office we left him messages we had a sit-in at his office like waiting room we had um what else we um ended up making it a requirement that when you come into our university like our university at Fullerton specifically you have to take an African-American course at our school so they just passed that as like a part of the curriculum And so I really feel like my BSU really helped me find like my sense of identity because, you know, growing up in the suburbs, you don't see a lot of people that look like, you know, yourself, me, whatever you want to say. And so I really feel like the fact that I was able to make friends and have friends for the past three years that I've been at this university, it really helped me like figure out who I am and what I'm going to tolerate and what I'm not going to tolerate from other people who don't understand my culture. Awesome. Somebody jump in, jump in, jump in, jump in. Chelsea, we haven't heard from you. Well, as a freshman going into high school, I'd say BSU like made high school more comfortable for me Uh because like, I don't know, because everyone was new as far as being a freshman. And I don't know, because it just made my freshman year easier knowing that I have like people who support me um, and just stand with me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when you say stand with you, what do you mean? Like, I mean, like, that in- like we have a similar mindset as far as like what we should do throughout the school okay. and how we should spread more awareness and stuff. Okay. Lyric? I love your hair, by the way, ladies. Thank I'm you so much. Jonathan, I'm loving the hair. I'm like, yes, you're giving me <laughs> Okay, so for me, it was a little different because um, I'm actually not from, like, a suburb of California. Uh, I used to live um, in, like, northwest Indiana, which is very, it's near Chicago, so it's very, like, predominantly black. Yeah. Um, so when I moved to uh, my little suburb in California, it was, like, very weird. It was new, so I had to do, like, a lot of code switching to be able to relate to, like, the kids that um, go to my school. So, um BSU really just gave me a place where I didn't have to like particularly like code switch and I felt like I was acting as if like I was somebody that I wasn't just because I had to like conform to these new standards with these uh, people that I really had no idea how to act around so mm-hmm. being in BSU is just like uh, kind of like a little slice of where I where I come from being like seeing as the BSU that um, I'm a part of is more like predominantly black it was just like kind of like a little slice of where I'm from so it really gave me a sense of community and a place where I could really be myself oh awesome that's really dope Tiana I would say it's a little bit different for me because I'm kind of the opposite of lyric like I've been born and raised in lily white California for my entire life so like I'm used to being around white people so it's like I would always have my hair straight and I would always like I would always talk like this like hey guys what's up oh my gosh yes and like I would I like didn't really know who I like who I was or like what my roots were for the longest time until I started until I joined BSU in my freshman year and um I became like more aware of like wait a minute like this this is a part of who I am too I need to learn how to bring this out I started wearing my hair out more often I started like um, reading up more on like history of like Frederick Douglass and Dred Scott and Malcolm X and Sojourner Truth, all these people who like are my ancestors. And like, I feel like because of BSU, I've learned like who I really am. Oh, that's dope. That's, I, I love the fact that you, you, you're being so authentic and saying like, you really didn't know who you, you know, were and you get that living, you know, here and raising, cause I have three sets of kids. And so when I look at my generational um, gaps, I can tell which kids are from LA and which kids were born here. You know, Jonathan, you want to go ahead and answer that? Uh, I actually have nothing to say. It was exactly what Chelsea said. You know, it made me feel more comfortable being at the school and having more Black people to see around you. Mm-hmm. So that's all. And when you say having Black people around you, what what does that mean to you? Like, because you guys are a different generation than myself. And so I understand, but you know, there are parents out there that are non-African-American that, 
they, you know, while we moving to a different climate into a different ecosystem and being very intentional, when we say, you know, it made me feel apart, what does that mean to you? Because there's also educators watching. What does it mean to feel apart? Um, just to feel a part of like um, the people around you because we're so left out because people don't understand what we go through and what it's like being black. So seeing more black people around me mm -hmm. that I was able to connect with made me feel more comfortable being at the school. Now, um, from you all's experiences around um, your high school, what made you not feel a part? Like aside from, take all of the people out, aside from the people being in the school, what made you feel disconnected? Like from the school, the mascot, you know, even the teachers or tell me what made you feel like you weren't a part. Tiana, I love you. Okay. <laughs> so I would say that like, um, even as a person, when you like ignore the people, because I never really had a problem with like making friends or anything, but um, when you like look at what you learn about, like even with something like To Kill a Mockingbird, and like having to read that racist narrative and then like having to pretend like it doesn't bother you just to make the grade. And just overall like seeing history that like, like history is my favorite subject, but even in the class, they don't talk about the real like girth of it because right. they'll just say like, oh, like Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves. I'm like, okay, but you didn't talk about how um, like um, Thomas Jefferson owned slaves and um, did inhumane things to them. You don't talk about the dark side of it. You try to like, paint the white savior image and that that's what I grew up with and it's like you don't feel included because it makes you feel like um you're being painted as something that you're not and something that you weren't um that's just a, like something that you didn't want to be in the first place like your history was stripped away from you and that's the that's a part of the disconnect as well okay hmm. wow Jonathan do you, do you have anything to add being an African-American male because uh -huh. then you have to look at that demographic, you're a part of a yet smaller population um, from the areas that you all are from, right? Mm -hmm. The only thing that made me feel left out was um, not having a big group of all black friends. That was really it. I had black friends, but we weren't all in the big group because they were all hanging out with different people or different races. Mm -hmm. So it was you, hard to fit in. Now, now, did you feel like things were diluted down when situations arose at your school? Because you guys were part of the executive board, right? I have no idea. You guys are the vice president, the president, and then the secretary, right? I mean, I'm the president. I know Chelsea is the secretary, but Lyric and Jonathan are just members of RBSU. So did you, did you guys feel like it was diluted down when your issues were taken to like the principal or to, if you wanted to put on a program, did you, did you find that you had a lot of pushback on some of the things you wanted to do? I remember like with our um, principal is like, she tries to, um, oh, oh, I can't, I can't say that, can I? <laughs> okay, I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to say anything like, um, negative or anything but it's just like it feels like a lot of our staff members weren't trying to like understand what we were trying to do like we tried to do like a black to school barbecue because it's just a play on words it was just a barbecue then people but then like um when we tried to um pitch it it was like oh that, that's a little too radical like you think you want to call it like something else and i'm like it's just a black to school barbecue for a black student union it's not anything harmful and so I feel like a lot of the times when we try to do events, like they get like this weird um, stigma around them, like as if we're trying to do something that's like going against um, the school rules or something when it's just us trying to come together as a club. Mm, okay, I, I, I can understand how that can look a little, you know, radical. But um, now as you all are matriculating over to college, have, um, who, who's already out of school? Who's graduated already? Okay, so um, Lyric and Tiana, oh, Amaya, um, <laughs> when you all are choosing your schools, did you, did you see a, a larger presence of African-American students, and did the BSU stick out to you? Um, I'll give you that question, and then I'll, I'll give you another one. So how did you choose your school? Was it solely just major, or was it you felt comfortable at that campus? Um... 
Well, <laughs> when I chose my school, I didn't really like, because uh, I didn't want to evaluate where I was going specifically based on the demographics, because if that was the case, and I definitely would not have chosen the school that I'm going to now, because the school I'm going to now is like 6% African American. Um, it was more based on like, um, well, it was like a factor of things. So of course it was based on like academics, but also like overall presence of not only just black people, but people of color. Um, I did, I was able to reach out to some of the members of the BSU and talk to them. And that made me feel very comfortable about where I'm going. Um, so yeah, it was just like a factor of things. And what about you, Tiana? Oh, I'm not, I'm not graduating. <laughs> oh, okay. So Amaya, um, what can you say to our younger guests about what BSU looks like um, and how you can find, you know, that BSU on the, on the camp, college campus? Um, well, for me, um, when I first got to my school, it kind of took me a while because I commute. I don't live there. I feel like it's a different experience when you live on campus and when you drive. Because um, my first year or my first semester of my first year, I was like, you know, go to school, come home. You know, I wasn't really trying to like um, really talk to anybody. I kind of had that high school mindset where it's like, I'm the new kid and I'm just going to keep to myself. But then it was kind of like they found me per se, because um, a lot of when you get there, a lot of, you know, people are more outgoing. I'm not really a very outgoing person. I'm kind of like an introvert kind of. Don't try to make that face, mom. <laughs> and um, so at first when I didn't have any friends or anything, I would like sit by myself. And then one day the BSU president, like just, she walked up to me and was like, hey, um, I'm the BSU president. And I don't know if I've never seen you in the arc before. You look new, uh, come with me. And it was kind of like, oh, okay, well, here I go. And it was kind of like, I'm making friends now. So it wasn't necessarily like I had to like go searching, you know, like they kind of found me. And that's what made me feel like it was really genuine at the fact that like they're looking for people to kind of join and not feel alone, especially on a campus where you don't have a lot of people that look like you. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, we're, we're about two minutes out before we have to close up. I wanted to give you all an opportunity. If you have one thing or one tip that you can give parents about um, Black Student Union or just anything that you feel, um, when we're talking about intention intentionality, you know, you want people to be intentional. You want to give a parents a tip or... Something. I would I would say just don't be performative. If you're going to say Black Lives Matter, if you're going to say Black Students Matter, if you're going to say anything like that, like be about it. Don't just say this, but then not include Black people in the narrative. Don't just say, oh, I'm I'm not like I um, I support this, but then you um, continue to push racist narratives with your education, your curriculum. Like just try to try to like actively change the system that's clearly not working. Oh, awesome. Great answer. Jonathan? I don't really have anything to say, to be honest. Nothing? What about to the, what about to the younger African-American males out there? What can you say? Um, just keep your head up high. You know, always have hope that you can find your group at least some point. Either they go to a different school or they're, uh, even your cousins, you know, that became my group. So always keep your head up high that you'll find your group of African-American males. Awesome. Lyric? Um, if I had something to say specifically to the parents, it would definitely just be like, talk to your children because that stuff really matters. Even if you think like um, something's like not affecting them and they seem fine, it's probably doing, it's probably affecting them in some type of way. So if I was to say anything, I would just, say definitely talk to your children even if you think that they would feel comfortable sharing it does mean a lot when you reach out to them anyway awesome great love it chelsea um i would say to like mainly parents of students like or just students in general like if you don't have like that that like person to talk to look to bsu because that really helped me a lot because a lot of things i learned not 
like most things I learned from the BSC were not just from my parents. So just stick with BSC for the most part. Oh, that's good. Lamar, you want to wrap it up? You got about 30 seconds. Um, I would just say do stuff with your kid. You know, like me and my mom, we do a lot of stuff together, especially when it comes to like events and stuff for school or I'll try to like drag her along with me because I don't want to go by myself. So, like, just give your kid a chance to be comfortable around you, because as you get older, you're going to have to get used to certain things and doing certain things around your parent. So it's kind of like for parents and their, and students, obviously, just try to incorporate each other in the things that you do so that you're more comfortable with talking to your parent or doing things with them. All right. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you all again for coming here and um, sharing your experiences and just taking, you know, time out with me. I hope I, I served you all well as your host, you know. I wanna say thank you so much, um, parents, and um, all those that are watching out there in the world. Thank you for coming to Managing Day Day with Christina Laster. Make sure you tune in to other shows that the National Parents Union hosts, and then you'll see me on Thursday for PE with Coach. You guys have a good one. Bye-bye. <laughs>